Hi everyone, and today we will be doing a tutorial on how to make a glossy button. So go ahead and open GIMP. This will be done in GIMP, and it will be a fairly glossy 3D button. I'll just wait for it to load. It's my first narrated tutorial, so wish me luck. I'll be doing this in Camtasia Studio 6, this one. And um, I used to use Cam Studio, but that didn't work very well on my computer, so sorry about that. Ah, finally loading. Okay, now go ahead and put that to full screen. So, File, New, leave the defaults, click OK. Now, I'll just zoom out a bit so you can see it a bit better. Now, start off, make a circle selection on the background. Uh, you should hold shift actually while you're doing that. Yeah, hold shift. And then um, click the gradient tool, put it to FG to BG, foreground to background. Foreground, select a dark red and background a light red. Sorry, the other way around. And select radial. So let's make a selection about something like wait about like that yes that's good now go select none then add alpha channel from layer transparency add alpha channel and then hit edit cut or delete whichever one you prefer and then you can move the button to where you want and then go layer and s layer to image size there. Okay, now make a new layer, leave the defaults, click OK. Now make another circle selection, something like this. We'll move it later. Yeah, I'll, mm, uh, yeah, I'll move it later. Just go on the gradient tool, select white as your foreground. Um, go to FG to transparent and then linear. Make a stroke down about something like that. Yes. And then select none. Now move it to uh, oops. Move the highlight to where it looks best. In this case I'll put it around there, so it's quite in the centre. Now make a new layer. Again leave the defaults. Uh I think I missed out something so I'm just gonna add another highlight, a bit bigger than the one before, about like that. I'll put it behind later. Just do, I'll just do the same on that to give it a glossy look right now. Something like that's good. I'm just going to move it down. I'll click there. Yep. And then select none. We'll just move it to where it's more appropriate. That's good. And now just move that. Set the opacity down a bit, otherwise it stands out way too much. It's about good. And then same for that one, we can set that on overlay. Give it a glossy look. Set the other one on overlay. Uh, that stands out a little too less, so we're going to turn the opacity up a bit. Yes, that's good. Okay. Now another new layer, leave the defaults. Now um okay, another selection around the bottom like this. Yeah, about there. And um fill it upwards with white or grey. I'll do white. And then select none. Actually that doesn't really follow the curve of the button very well. Let me just see. No, it doesn't. I um, I think I'll just delete that. Yeah, I'll delete that. We're gonna make it follow the curve of the button. So, yes, that's better. Now make the exact same thing. I'm gonna try grey this time. See how that looks. A stroke on linear upwards on FG to b transparent. That's okay. Now select none. Okay, now set it on overlay. 
We'll just move it to where it looks best. Well, I should have stuck to white actually. Oh well, let's keep going. A new layer. Okay. Now um, select. Uh, whoops. Yeah. On the new layer, we're gonna add some text now. So I'm just gonna write mm, hello. Oops. Close. And let's put it black. Okay. And scale it up a bit. Make it bold, I will. Now move it towards the center. And then I'm gonna go oh wait, hang on. Yeah, filters, light and shadow, drop shadow. Yes. Okay, now set the radius to one. I mean, not the radius, but the offsets to one, both of them, and the blur radius to zero. Make the color white, then click OK. Now, um, click on the layer of text, then go alpha selection when you right click, and then go edit cut. There, and then still selected, add another drop shadow, go fill, um, light and shadow drop shadow minus one this time minus one on both and then the color to black okay now select none and that gives a bit of an embossed 3d effect mm, looks like it's been carved into the button now merge all of these down all of the text layers and I'm gonna change the layer mode to overlay or I'm just going to experiment see what's best. Divide is not that good. Normal, I'll try hard light. No, soft light. Yes, I'm going to stick with soft light. That's same as overlay, but still. Okay, now I'm just make sure that's in the center again. And then, um, that's pretty much it. Oh wait, hang on. Um, I'm going to try something new. I haven't imp I've this is just a bit of an improvisation. Let's see if it works. Choose the gradient abstract. Abstract two. And then make a stroke about like that. And then set it on overlay. Oh, that's worked quite well. And then just move it somewhere better. Uh, maybe turn the opacity down a bit. That's better. And then yeah, yeah, I like it. That's good there. And um, that's it. It's pretty good. There you have a 3D button in GIMP. Uh, another way to do it is just go f a new, double click uh, to make it bigger, and file, create, simple round button. And then uh, I'm just going to leave the defaults. Okay. There we go. It's just generated about four. There. What a waste of time. Could have just done all of that in um, three seconds instead of waste all that time. But anyway, there. That's just the example of what it would look like if you didn't waste your time on my type of button. I'm gonna exit now. Oh wait. Gone show you the final result again. There is the final result. So rate, comment, subscribe. There'll be more tutorials coming.